I want to speak about um, godly wisdom. Have you ever thought about wisdom and uh, what God expects us to do concerning wisdom? Okay. In the book of Proverbs 16 verse 16, it says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than to be chosen than silver? You see, God expects us to get wisdom. And uh, this wisdom is uh, very important because the Bible urges, the Bible is always urging us and telling us that uh, wisdom is very important and we should get it above all things. Remember in Proverbs 4, 7, where it tells us uh, that uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Okay. Now, but you have to understand there are, there are different kinds of wisdom. There are different kinds of wisdom. Man's wisdom and uh, godly wisdom. Okay. And uh, the Bible tells us about the wisdom of this world. God tells us about the wisdom of this world. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3.19, it says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Okay, is foolishness. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Sometimes you can be chasing wisdom of the world. We chase so much. We just chase career. We chase, I want to be a professor. I want to be an engineer. I want to chase this. It's, it's not bad to be all those things. But uh, all this kind of wisdom, no matter how many PhDs you have, God still says you're a fool. Have you ever discovered and asked yourself one thing? Uh, <laughs> why is it that the most educated people in the world are the most people who refuse God, are the type of people who say God does not exist? Many of them are professors, engineers, great people. And then many of them, they say, oh, God does not exist. We don't believe in God and this and that. But the people who have learned the Bible, the wisdom of God, they perfectly know that God exists. God exists. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 3, verse, uh, when you go to verse 20, it talks about the Lord knowing the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. The thoughts of the wise, they are futile. So there is obviously a difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. Okay? There is a big difference. And I want to show you this difference. Let me show you the difference between godly wisdom and uh, worldly wisdom, okay? Uh, James, James 3, 13, and we can read to 17. Let me, let me read to you. The Bible says, Who is a wise man and uh, endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strive in your heart, hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual devilish you see the kind of devilish wisdom you see are, are you getting the point here this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual devilish for where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work have you ever seen uh, the kind of wisdom we have in the world nowadays is so that I can be better than you. I can have a better car than you. I can have a bigger house than you. I can have more money than you. Is is a is a wisdom of envy, a wisdom of strife. I want to strive to be better than all of you. Is a is a wisdom of pride. The wisdom of this world is a wisdom of pride, and there is always confusion. And every evil work. When you want to be wiser than... Let's look at politicians. They want to be wise with craftiness. So that they can always be above every other person. When you see someone going to learn political science. What is political science? Just, just the art of manipulation. To manipulate voters. To manipulate people. That, that's the wisdom of this world. But let's see. What the Bible says about godly wisdom. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, 
then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's God's wisdom. Which one are you seeking for, my brothers? Are you seeking the wisdom of this world? Are you seeking godly wisdom? Which one are you looking for? Because godly wisdom is, of course, from God and honors God. Godly wisdom starts with the fear of God and results in a holy life. But worldly wisdom, worldly wisdom, on the other hand, is not concerned with honoring God, but with pleasing oneself. I want to be better than you. I want to be the most known than you. I want to be the, the greatest of all times. I've seen celebrities nowadays who have made history. They are called goats. I wonder why would you allow yourself to be called a goat? Greatest of all time. I've seen Michael Jordan, goat, greatest of all. I, I wonder, they're just goats. But you are the sheep of God. We follow him. Let them be goats. Let them keep on being goats. Because all they're thinking about is the things of this world. And it's, it's all about how big I will be and what I will do and how much history, legacy I will leave. That's the wisdom of this world. But the wisdom of God is very different. It's very different. The wisdom of this world tells us, look for money, look for success, look for retirement, look, look for benefits, uh, build a good house, retirement home, have this and that, have this and that, oppress people, be, be, as long as you're making the money, don't worry about others. But the wisdom of God tells us, as long as you've eaten and you have some clothes to wear, don't worry about tomorrow. God will care about your tomorrow. Love your brother as you love yourself. Give others. Help others. Do what is right. That's the wisdom of God. He tells us, let's love our brothers, our sisters, as we love ourselves. If I, if I keep on preaching to you guys here, and all that I want is to get rich or uh, to be famous or somebody can say, oh, Keith was, is a great guy and then I can be called in conferences and I can uh, be on billboards and all that. that. That's not godly wisdom. I'm having worldly wisdom. Have you seen even pastors? They have, there are many of them who have a worldly wisdom. They want, instead of explaining the Bible in a way that people can understand, they want to use deep vocabularies and deep uh, things so that people cannot understand even what they are saying. They just say, well, that guy is really knowledgeable. That's the wisdom of the world. But godly wisdom is, is that one which seeks the things above. Are, are you getting the point? Because with worldly wisdom, we may become educated. We may become street smart. And we may have common sense that enables us to play the world's games successfully. But godly wisdom enables us to prepare ourselves for eternity. With godly wisdom, we trade earthly values for biblical values. Okay, let me read to you uh, the book of First James. First uh, John, actually. First John 2, verse uh, 15. Okay, First John 2, 15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the, is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Are you lasting in the things of this world? Do you love the things of the world? Are you lasting for that? Do you want to get so much knowledge so that you can you can push people into what in into you know you can push people to the edge so that you can get more? When you look at this uh, global elites and all these other people, what they are doing is that they want to take everything for themselves. I just saw the gates of hell in the U.S., what he did. I've heard he has taken all the farmland in the U.S. I don't know. I don't live there. Why would you have all the farmland? Are you going to eat from 100 acres of land? Are you going to eat food from there? It doesn't really make sense. It's because they have the lust, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. They want to be proud. The lust of the flesh. These are the sins. This is because they, they want the 
the things of this world so much. That's why they are living like that. And we recognize that we are citizens. Us, ourselves, we are citizens of a, of a different world. Okay? The godly world. We are, we are not of this place. This is not our home. Okay? We are citizens of another kingdom. And we make choices that reflect that allegiance. Okay? In the book of Philippians told us about that. It told us whenever we're doing anything, okay, whenever we're doing whatever we have to do, let's think about the things above, not the things below, okay? Things above only. See what it says. Only let your conversation be as it become the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or be, be present, be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel the faith of the gospel your conversation should become the gospel of christ when you're talking to people do you con co co converse in a way that jesus is glorified or are you conversing in a way that people will just wonder what's wrong with this guy let me also show you in the book of philippians also in the book of Philippians uh, 3, verse 20, it also tells us something here. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your conversation centered at? Your conversation, is it centered on Christ? Because that's where we're, we're, we're supposed to be. That's our conversation, Okay. Having godly wisdom means we strive to see life from God's perspective and we act accordingly. Okay? Now, let me show you something here. You see, the book of Proverbs is part of the, uh, of the Bible known as wisdom literature. Proverbs is full of practical instructions for life. Many Proverbs, con uh, they, they contrast the wise with the foolish and warn against repeating foolish actions. The, the book of Proverbs tells us that because here is where we have the wisdom of God. The whole Bible is full of wisdom. Let me show you a few wisdoms. Okay, a, just a, a couple of wisdom here, which is written in this book. Okay, let's look at uh, Proverbs 3.35. It says, the wise shall inherit glory, but Shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise shall inherit glory. Mm -hmm. Let me also show you another one here. These are my favorites. Okay. Uh, Proverbs uh, 14 verse uh, 24. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. You can keep on reading over and over in the book of Proverbs and you will be able to see there's a lot of wisdom in this book. But uh, you have to understand everyone makes mistakes, but the wise learn from their mistakes and take steps to avoid repeating them. And also they learn from other people's mistakes. Are, are you getting the point? So just don't be that one person who doesn't learn. The foolish may make the same mistake over and over again and never learn from their lesson because the people of this world, they are keeping on sinning and they do wrong things and there's consequences of the wrong things that they do and they still don't learn. Like right now, if you read in the book of Genesis, it, it, it tells us about how it happened in the, in, the, in the beginning. How the fallen angels, they mated with the children of men. And right now, the same thing is about to happen in the world and people are not seeing these things. The funny thing about history is that people never learn from history. The Bible is there so that it can show us what happened, so that we can use that wisdom to learn, to understand because godly wisdom is really important. Now, let me tell you something. Godly wisdom may look very different from worldly wisdom. And uh, Jesus highlighted these differences in his sermon on the mount. You remember in Matthew 5, 7, for example, he said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. 
Godly wisdom often requires us to do that which is opposite our natural inclinations. Godly wisdom does uh, goes against the conventional. Uh, what do we call it? Conventional, conventional wisdom. Convention, uh, whatever. Yeah, you understand the word. It's it's basically like um this this fish. Okay, the everybody's going heading towards one side but then godly wisdom is like you you should see the light and change your direction and say no i'm not going to be like everyone else i'm going to be different that's what we call godly wisdom and this conventional uh, wisdom is everybody is heading one way the whole world right now is welcome is going to welcome the antichrist in a very smooth way only the people with godly wisdom are going to be like this fish. Only those. Okay? Only those. Because <laughs> we can only live in godly wisdom when we are committed to crucifying our flesh and living in the spirit. We have to crucify our flesh. Like this, this fish, it doesn't know where it's going because it's going alone. The others, they are going because they are following. A, it, it's like the way you just wake up and you find uh, uh, the world says that, oh, we are, we are on a spinning ball. We are some monkeys on a spinning ball, uh, spinning at 66,600 kilometers per hour. And, uh, and you ask yourself, but Genesis tells us that God created the world and uh, everything is centered on the earth. How comes we are just a part of a big universe, planet? And you see, the, the world is telling everyone one thing, but the Bible is telling you, no, 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 no. You're not just, uh, you do not just came, come from nowhere, from some, they, they call it, I don't know, Pomodio soup or whatever it, they, they say. You are created. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God knew you when you are still in your mother's womb. We have to crucify our flesh and decide that I'm going to be different. Let me show you what the Bible says here. In the book of Galatians uh, 2 verse uh, 20, the Bible tells us this. It tells us, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, when the devil comes and tells you, oh, you are this, you are this, you did this, you did that, you're a sinner. Just tell him, come on, devil, you're, you're speaking to a dead man. I'm already dead. I'm already dead. I was crucified 2,000 years ago with Christ. It's not me who lives now. It is Christ who lives in me. Stop arguing with the dead man. That's exactly how you should deal with your body whenever your body is trying to tell you, Follow the ways of the world. T tell, tell Satan, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, I'm already dead. Stop speaking to a dead man. Are you getting the point here? Let's also see the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5 verse 16. It says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What does that mean? We should redeem the time. Right now, it is, it is the time that we should be redeeming. Just living for the day, trying to preach to as many people as possible. Trying to tell them, please come to Christ. The time is over. Because these days that you are living are very evil. The days you are living are very evil. And nobody wants to hear about the goodness of Christ. You have to redeem the time. And the Bible tells us, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do you know the will of God? Or are you unwise? Are you a fool? Because wisdom of God tells us to understand the times, to understand when you are living, to understand the things which are happening. Look at verse 25 here. He says, uh, it says, uh, husband, loves your, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Are you loving your God? Because the church is an image of the wife. And Jesus is the head of the church. 
Are you loving your father, God, with all that you have? Are you loving your father with all that you have? Because if husbands are loving their wives, Jesus is loving us. That's for sure. Are you understanding this? And you should understand, if Jesus is loving us, then what are we supposed to be doing as a church? Submissive, loving him back, following his ways. If you're a wife and you never listen to your husband, what happens to you? You're just like any other person out there who doesn't even know what he's doing. And uh, the primary way how we can gain godly wisdom is by learning God's word. God's word. Just as Psalms 119 verses 169, it tells us, Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. I need God's understanding. I need God's understanding. I need to understand what God wants for me. It's really important to know these things. Let me show you one verse here in Psalms. Psalms 119, verse uh, 130. It tells us that uh, the entrance of thy words giveth light. When the words of God enter in you, they give you light. It gives understanding unto the simple. You may be a simple person who is just from a third world country or from a first world country or from a 17th world country. I don't, I don't care where, which type of place you're coming from. You may be a simple person. You're not even known in your village, even in your family. You're the least. But the moment the, the words of God enter into you, they give you light. While others, they are still in darkness, you are in the light. When others are running, following the systems of the world, you have light and you are the one telling them, come on, these guys are just lying to you. These people are just lying to you. This is the true light of God. Because you are given understanding by God. God gives you understanding when his word comes in you. Because no one is born wise, my friends. No one is born wise. We must acquire wisdom from God. If we are to be truly wise, we are to acquire wisdom from God. If we are to be truly wise. Let me show you something here. In Psalms, uh, in Psalms 119 verse 98, just here, uh, it says, Psalms 119 verse 98, I'll read to 100. It says, Thou... Uh, thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. You see, the commandments of God, following what God wants you to do, listening to God, walking in the spirit, has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Okay? I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. There is wisdom in knowing God, in following God. There is a lot of wisdom. There is a lot of wisdom. Okay? Let me also show you something here in the book of Colossians uh, 3 verse 16. Okay? Uh, 3 verse 16. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Are you seeing this, my friends? Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom. And then after you gather wisdom, teach, admonish one another in songs and hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, singing with grace and talking. Are you getting this? It's really, really important. So, guys, you have to understand that immersion in God's word produces a heart of worship and thanksgiving. That the heart of worship becomes fertile soil for seeds of wisdom to grow. Jesus prayed to the Father and he said in John 17, 17, that sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And he wants his followers to be 
uh, set apart from the world, making godly choices and living godly lives. As the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Peter, okay, 1 Peter 1 verse 15. 1 Peter 1, 15, he says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. How can you be holy when the word of God is in you? That's the only way you can be holy. That's the only way you can be wise and have the wisdom of God. We can also develop godly wisdom by carefully selecting those who we journey with. Who do we journey with? Huh? Who we journey with in through this life. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs uh, 13 20, it says, Become wise by walking with the wise, hang out with fools and watch your life fall into pieces. If you walk with people who are just having worldly wisdom, they think that they have everything because uh, they know how to con people and how to uh, make some deals, shady deals, and make uh, money and make a life for themselves then you'll be like them you'll be a fool and uh, paul instructed the corinthians to imitate him or to follow him because he's also following christ paul says follow me in first corinthians 4 16 let me show you this because i don't i don't want you to say that uh, i'm just creating my things Gem, uh, corinthians 4 corinthians 4 16 paul said this Follow me. He said what? Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Why is he saying that? Be followers of me. Because I know where I'm heading. I know where I'm heading. I'm heading towards the right goal with godly wisdom. And those who want godly wisdom will choose for their heroes. Those who exhibit wisdom in their personal lives. The scripture tells us to ask for godly wisdom. Ask for godly wisdom okay in james 1 5 it says if any of you lacks wisdom you should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given unto you okay ask god god wants us to have his wisdom he's delighted to give it to us when our hearts are set to receive it however when you just go ahead there after James 1, 5, James 1, 6, basically says that, uh, but he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You have to understand that uh, you got to have faith. When you're asking from God, God knows what, 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 he knows the position of our hearts. When we are committed to trusting him and obeying his word, he pours out his wisdom on us. God pours his wisdom on us absolutely so much. Let me show you this one. Jeremiah uh, 29 verse 13. Just see. And you shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart. You see what God is saying? When you seek him with all your heart, you're going to find him. When you seek him with the truth in spirit and in truth, you're going to find God. You see, when you, when you seek the things of this world, no matter how much you search them in truth, you'll always find diluted, corrupted wisdom. When you go to a school and they're teaching you, Yes, it's good they are teaching you. But Satan is very cunning. Do you think the, the education system has been set so that people can get good jobs and live well? Nothing. Do you, do you want to tell me before education, Abraham and Moses and Isaac and the, the prophets, they were not living, they were not eating? You want to tell me because the education system came, now is when people have started living? Actually, this is the time that people are living like, like animals. They don't even understand themselves. Because the wisdom of this world is always against God and is teaching people wrong things. He's teaching people how a, a girl can be a boy, a boy can be a girl. He's teaching confusion, he's teaching this, he's teaching that, he's teaching that you're, a, you're an ape, you're a monkey, you're this. It, it's confusion, total confusion. I'm not saying people don't go to school. Go to school. <laughs> but uh, 
for me what i understand going to school is just a place of uh, just go and interact with other people and learn a few basic things here and there but if you put all your mind there you're going to be as lost as a golf ball in high wheat because this world has nothing to offer remember solomon do you remember king solomon uh-huh solomon received godly wisdom when he asked the lord for it in second chronicles uh, chap chapter 1 from verse 10 to 11 he asked god and god gave him wisdom he became known for his great wisdom yet in his later years he turned away from following the wisdom he'd been given he disobeyed god he disobeyed god and even began to worship idols and that was the start of his downfall you can read his downfall in a uh, uh, first kings 11 verses 1 to 11 just go and read there you'll see the downfall of of uh, solomon receiving wisdom did not ensure that solomon would follow the path of wisdom sadly he exchanged his godly wisdom for worldly wisdom and he suffered for it the rest of first kings uh, verse 11 details solomon's downfall as the lord removed his hand of blessing from a man who was once great because he decided ah i don't want the wisdom of god guys it's very important for us to understand indeed if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding and if you look for it as it is silver and search for it as a hidden treasure then you will understand the fear of the lord you will understand the fear of the lord let me let me just show you this verse let me show you this verse uh, proverbs 2 verse uh, 3 and I'll read you to 6, okay? Just see what the Bible says. Yeah, if you criest after knowledge, if you cry looking for knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, you see, where is the understanding coming from? When you lift up, you lift up your voice to God, to heaven, okay? If you seek her as silver, you're seeking understanding, okay? You're not... God is not the one called her. This is talking about wisdom. If you seek her, you seek wisdom as silver and such as for her as, as for hid treasures, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. God gives wisdom. Are you looking for godly wisdom so that God can tell you what you need to do? He can tell you how to live with others. He can tell you how to have a relationship with him. He can tell you how to be a, a good person, how to do this. Each and everything in this world is in the Bible. God wants to give you wisdom. And the greatest of all wisdom is knowing him. You need to understand him. Know Christ and let him know you. Because if you don't know him, one day he will come and ask you, did you do according to my will? Did you know me? Or get away from me. I never knew you. Do you know Christ? Because that's the biggest thing. You have to know him. How do you know him? Through the gospel. Through the gospel is how you know him. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You have to understand. This is all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How he died for our sins. Jesus died a very bloody death. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. And unless blood was shed, there could be no forgiveness of sins. You are the one who was supposed to be on this cross. But Jesus said, no, don't go there. Let me go there on your behalf. Let me take your death so that you can take my life. And whosoever will believe that I died for him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. My friends, all you need to do is believe that fact and confess it to Christ. Tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. You are buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I received that payment of sin, that atonement that you gave for me by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. And once you've done that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope it's been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please, you can give it a like. You can uh, 
share and subscribe to this channel and also at the description below we have a couple of other channels outside youtube where you can go and have uh, some wisdom go and learn about the things of god and also share to your friends god bless you and have a good beautiful day